There are so many black female mathematicians who have contributed to the technology that we have in our lives today. Women such as Evelyn Boyd Granville, Valerie Thomas, Dorothy Vaughn, and our not so hidden figure, Katherine Johnson. Let's not take for granted the contributions that they have to our lives today. Where do you go when you want to go higher? See places and things and it never expires. A book can take you anywhere. Turn the pages and you'll be there. Come on, join us, you'll see. Hi, friends, and thank you for joining me for another Read with Carolee, where we have authors from all around the world and maybe just down your street. So today we have for you author Dawn McEwen. But before I introduce her, I want to make sure that you are ready to join us. So make sure you hit like, press that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any author that is coming to meet us every week. So, Ms. Dawn, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Carrie Lee. I am so glad to have you here. So. Could you tell our friend where you are joining from today? I am joining you all from Las Vegas, Nevada. And so I am so very thankful to see everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, we're so glad to have you. And we are so glad for you to come and read your book. We can do it. And it's so this is such a special book and a, such a great time. So I'm so happy for you to come and read for us. And I know our friends will be so glad to hear this great story. So could you take it away for us and read? We can do it. Absolutely. All right, friends. Well, thank you very much. This little book that I have created is about a young girl named Raven. And here we go. Raven, what are you doing up so early? Mama asked as she walked into the kitchen. You should be getting ready for school, baby. Yeah, I know, Mama, Raven replied, but I've been working on a new project. What is it, Mama asked. A volcano, Raven announced. When it erupts, candy will spew out instead of lava. Mama smiled as Raven continued to explain. The fifth grade science fair is coming up soon. Last year, I got third place. This year, I know I can do better. You're always up to something, Mama said, a grin spreading across her kind face. I'm sure your volcano is going to be great, but you really need to get ready for school. Okay, baby? Raven nodded as her mother turned to leave. Kaboom! The volcano erupted with a loud pop. It spewed out colorful wet goo across the kitchen floor. Oh, no! Raven grunted. I definitely added too much water. It's supposed to be mostly candy that comes out when the volcano erupts. The gooey mess was all over the floor, but the table was clean. Raven smiled. It's so close to being perfect. She turned at the sound of a familiar voice. Russell, her brother, was standing in the doorway, laughing and pointing. Girls can't invent stuff, he chuckled. <laughs> I still remember that thing you made last year, the hat that kept blinking on and off. Hmm. Well, yes, I guess, Raven answered. Oh, and who could forget the personal vending machine the year before that, he added. When it exploded, the mess got all over the principal. This time it's got all over our kitchen floor. Raven sighed. Her brother's memory was on the mark, but she wasn't about to let, she wasn't about to take his teasing quietly. Oh, kind of like how the, all the red marks were all over your pre-algebra test last week. Seventh grade is eating you alive. Raven quickly responded with smirk. 
Yeah, whatever. We'll see how you do once you're out of elementary school, Raven said as he rolled his eyes. He grabbed some paper towels off the counter and handed them to his sister. I can dream, Raven declared. Maybe one day I'll build a time machine. Really, Raven? Her mother snickered. You? Yes, me, Raven exclaimed as she used a towel to wipe the messy floor. I might invent a remote control that makes tasty treats. I could figure out how to make flying cars, or maybe I'll build robots that do unimaginable things. Russell crossed his arms. Yeah, sure, but like I said before, girls can't invent stuff. Raven frowned at her brother's words. Have you heard of Madam C.J. Walker? She asked as she looked up at him. She was the daughter of slaves and lost her parents when she was a kid. She made products that could help black women grow healthy hair. They worked well. She opened a beauty school in a factory and she became one of the first black female self-made millionaires in America, Raven explained. Good for her, I guess, said Russell with a shrug, but only girls care about hair. Who else you got? Raven took a moment to think. Oh, there was Maria Van Britten Brown. She was a nurse. I thought we were talking about inventing stuff, Raven said, tilting his head and looking a bit puzzled. I'll get to that, Raven snapped. You see, Maria and her brother lived in a rough neighborhood. They both worked a lot and at different times of the day. Maria was often late, was, Maria was often late without him, left without him. Crime was bad and the local cops weren't all that great. That sounds awful, Russell almost whispered. What did she do? She found a way to watch people walking by her apartment and look out for unexpected visitors. That idea became, Raven's voice trailed off as she pointed to a spot on the wall near the door to their backyard. Russell's eyes widened with surprise at his, as his sister announced, the home alarm security system. Yes, a black woman invented the home alarm security system during a time when many African-Americans were fighting for basic civil rights. Okay, Russell said, nodding his head. So that's two girls who made things. Congratulations, he snickered as he turned to leave the kitchen. Hold on, make that three, Raven said as she followed her brother. Alice H. Parker invented the first thermostat. What? Raven pulled him to a window in the living room. She pointed to the, to the thermostat mounted on the wall. Why did she do it? Russell asked. Raven began slowly. Well, chopping wood took a lot of time and energy and fireplaces weren't always the safest. I see, Russell said. So her invention made heating a house more convenient and efficient. You got it, said Raven. Alice H. Parker managed to file a patent as a woman during a time when women were fighting for the right to vote and many African-Americans were facing obstacles like segregation. Blacks and whites went to separate schools. They actually had to drink from separate water fountains. In many places, they could not even live in the same neighborhoods. Alice Parker's invention wasn't just efficient, it was revolutionary, said Raven. Russell glanced up at the clock. Whoa, segregation sounds horrible. Raven, you've been talking my ear off. I need to iron my shirt before we go to school, Russell said as he hurried across the living room. Guess what? I'm going to keep on talking. Russell set up the ironing board. Raven grabbed the iron for her brother. She plugged it in and set it down on the board. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board. However, her life began as a slave in the 1800s, Raven continued. At that time, many African-Americans were considered property. They were forced to work during whatever their masters wanted. They often lived in horrible conditions, she explained. Luckily, Sarah obtained her freedom through marriage and she became an inventor. We should all be grateful, Raven said. People used to use a wooden plank. Ironing across it was difficult. Hmm, hummed Russell as he slid the iron across his shirt. She made this job easier, huh? Much easier, Raven laughed. You can thank her for making sure you don't look a hot mess every day. Russell sighed. 
His sister was right about that. He flipped his shirt to iron the other side. Can you think of any more inventors? Russell asked. I'm listening. Raven looked across the room at the sofa, a big smile spreading across her face. Sarah Good, she was born into slavery. She got her freedom after the Civil War, Raven explained. Sarah made furniture for people who lived in small places. She invented a bed that could also fold into a desk. She was one of the first African-American women to receive a patent in the United States. A patent gives an inventor the right to stop other people from making or using their inventions without permission, she added. Hey, I could use something like that, Russell chuckled. Satisfied with his freshly ironed shirt, he glanced at the clock one last time. Raven, can I look at your volcano before we go to school? He asked with a kind smile. Maybe I can help in some way. Really? Raven replied, her face lighting up. Yeah, sure, Russell said. You've convinced me. Convinced you of what? That girls really can't invent anything they put their minds to, he said lightly, resting his hands on his sister's shoulder. Then Russell's voice got serious. Raven, you're going to, do, you're going to absolutely blow the judges away this year, he said. All those women you told me about did amazing things. I know that you'll do something just as amazing or better. And finally, at the end, we have resources to learn more about these women that I've talked about in this book. And that is the end of We Can Do It. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you, Dawn. I, I must say, just like, you know, some of my friends that we saw, there's so many women that can do so many things that, you know, we've been told that we shouldn't or couldn't be able to do, uh, like that and CJ Walker and Sarah Boone. And, you know, I am so glad and grateful for the ladies of STEM that we were able to see that have been able to transform um, their career fields. And now, you know, to see so many women that have blazed the trail um, that you have shown us today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carrie Lee. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, so you are a teacher. Um, is that one of the reasons why you wrote this book? Absolutely. Um, I am a math science middle school teacher. I teach seventh grade. Um, the inspiration comes from wanting kids to be motivated and know that um, inventors, scientists do not all look one way and to be inspired and know that um, we have created things in times of struggle and difficult need, when we have seen a need for certain items and just said, okay, I need to make this better for myself. And that's how you get inventors. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I love that, you know, because her brother was telling Raven that, oh, you know, girls can't do this. And I, I've i been, you know, just, just like, like I said, you know, with our friends that we just saw, I have been able to come across so many female scientists, inventors, authors, you know, you know, back in the day, it was said that, you know, women should only, you know, be homemakers and moms and teachers mm -hmm. and nurses, but seeing the things that were so needed and necessary, they became great inventors and have been able to be an inspiration for so many women and so many women of color at that. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, so being a teacher, weren't there any other books that inspired you to want to write this book and, you know, possibly just even be an author? 
Um, I was very inspired by Hidden Figures um, and At A Twist Scientist. Um, I have to admit, it is mostly STEM books that have inspired me just because of the field that I am. I teach um, engineering um, and with uh, science. So that is mostly what has inspired me. Um, but I also was inspired greatly by my mother. My mother was a jack of all trades and an aerospace engineer. Um, and so she was always remodeling or trying something new. And I was always like, oh my goodness, here this lady goes again. Uh, <laughs> but she um, definitely inspired me. And that's who Raven is modeled after is this quirky girl and her brother that, that doesn't quite believe that she can do anything was her brother. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, wow. so that's really where the inspiration comes from because my mom could do everything and was a wonderful engineer. Oh, yes. And, you know, as you mentioned, Ada Twist Scientist has, you know, now become um, a, a Netflix show <laughs> to be able to inspire another generation of young women and young African-American women to let them know that they too can be inventors, can work in STEM, mm -hmm. can do so many things that we don't see regularly portrayed mm -hmm. on, you know, in media or on TV. Mm -hmm. So, you know, are there any other books that um, Raven may be inspiring or your mom may be inspiring. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I am definitely thinking about adding more because this was more along the lines of inventors. I'm thinking more of maybe adding more of a scientist uh, vibe to it where we talk about um, people of color that have been marine biologists and zoologists and have been done wonderful things in healthcare that we don't get to hear about, but it's really important that we talk about those people. So, yes. Yes, yes. It, I believe it is definitely important that we talk about those people because, you know, we have, and, and I am glad for even the two thousands and, you know, from 2010 on up because we've yes. seen such a resurgence or um, an evolution really of mm -hmm. women and African-American women, the things that they've done mm -hmm. to, in society that they're actually being recognized for now. And just like hidden figures, they're coming out of the shadows. So yes, yes I, I definitely am looking forward to your mm -hmm. next book. And I know our friends are looking forward to that as well, so that they could see the contribution that our ladies of STEM and African Americans have um, done, you know, for contributions to this world. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for writing. We can do it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And friends, so we've come to an end to another Read with Carolee. And you know what? There's just so much. It's not just getting a story. It's getting an education. So remember to join us each week. And don't forget to grab a book and read. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.